Hey guys, Jax here, Free Auto Mechanic. Today we're going to be swapping out a radiator, thermostat, upper and lower radiator hoses, and a serpentine belt on this 2008 Dodge 1500. It's got a 5.7 Hemi in it. Let's get to it. We'll get underneath the front and toward the center of the truck to the side. This is your drain petcock. You're going to need a uh, 16 millimeter. And she will start draining. So make sure you've got your drain pan in the right spot. Let it finish draining. You still got a few drips. So while we're waiting on that, we can go ahead and remove our overflow tank. Disconnect this hose, remove the bolt, and we're also going to need to remove the two bolts holding the power steering cooler on. They're underneath on the bottom. I think they're 10 millimeter, there's two on either side. I think you'll need a socket and a wrench because it's a bolt and a nut. And then we can go ahead and come over here and start disconnecting. Just disconnect the hose, 10 millimeter. Now, you can leave this off to the side, but there should be a, a hose for the, the windshield washer fluid as well that we'll need to grab. So, you want to get down in here, pop this loose in your air filter. This will allow all your hoses and wires that are connected to the bottom to stay attached. You can get this up high enough to where you can reach them. With a little finesse. You can see the spider web of hoses and wires. We can just leave that all attached and we'll just set this over to the side. And on the heater hoses, it's just a practice I've gotten into. I take these uh, heater hose clamps and, and you can use them for whatever clamp fuel also though if you just install them on your two heater hoses and snap them together and we'll do that before I disconnect the lower radiator hose and it should keep any fluid that's up in the heater core from flowing out on you and making a big mess the dreaded spring loaded hose clamp well, I've got a special tool for that you just slip it on there and then you use this to squeeze and I pull on this and it locks and you can see it's locked and holding freely and at that point you can take you just slide it right off so you can see just how much easier it is to do these clamps with that tool. When they get really tough, <laughs> don't want to come off. Sometimes just need to use a bigger persuader or a pry bar. Now there is another option. You could just cut that with razor blade. Put a slice right across there and peel it right off. And since we're putting a new hose on it, why not? Yep. Another thing to note, if you're not planning on changing your belt, you'd want to remove your belt before you start doing any of this so that you don't get coolant on it. 
just a little bit of coolant and it's going to squeak. see but I did get just a splash of coolant just that little bit on the belt that belt's junk that's all it takes it'll squeak no matter how long you drive it Once you get the bolt removed, then you can just slide the cooler to the left. And you don't need to remove it. You just leave it there. Next, we need to remove the radiator bolts and the radiator. take your belt off and if you don't have a uh, camera to take a picture of it so you know where the belt goes back on you might want to draw yourself a picture real quick or take a mental note so you know exactly how the belt came off of it you just put your 3 8 drive ratchet in here loosen it up take your belt off then once you do that you can come over to this side and uh, we're going to remove the two bolts on either side and thermostat housing. Now that we've got the thermostat housing removed, we we'll reach in there with some pliers if you're careful enough. Make one a little bit, oh. and it'll come right loose. You see it just fell out. So you might wonder why you would go this far and not replace the water pump. Well, I did in fact get in touch with the owner to see if he would like to have the water pump replaced at this time because it would be a whole lot cheaper and uh, for whatever reason he decided against it. So we're going to go ahead and do what they want, put it back together. Get our hoses on there, throw a new thermostat in up top here. And then we'll get uh, our new hoses on there, put the radiator in. So we want to get our new thermostat. We'll make sure it's got a new O-ring on there. And just install it the way we took the old one out.
you can see with the the belt and the tensioner out of the way the tensioner bolt right here i took that out of the way it allows you to get to the lower hose quite a bit easier so you can go right through the front instead of having to hang over the top you can actually go right through here to reach in there a little easier once the radiator is out of the way of course so we're going to put it back together in reverse order We'll get this hose back on there first, get our tensioner bolted back up, and then we'll go ahead and get our thermostat housing and thermostat installed back before we put our fan shroud in there. You want to make sure your surfaces are nice and clean, and then we'll install the housing. You could at this point put your serpentine belt on and make it real nice and easy. Uh, but if you get any little bit of antifreeze on it at all, just one drop, it's going to squeal. It's going to make all kinds of noise. So I'm going to wait and do it last. But I am going to go ahead and put my tensioner on. This takes our 115 millimeter bolt. You want to make sure you get those nubs lined up the way they're supposed to be. Now we got our tensioner in there. We want to go ahead and get our fan shroud set back in there. It might be raining a little bit out here, but the guy that owns this truck seems like a pretty good guy, and we want to try and get it back to him as soon as possible. So we'll see if we can't get this radiator in there for him. And you want to pay attention to get this line back up in the same spot down here. You don't ever want to force it in there. Gently set it in place. Is the idea. On this particular deal here, your lines have to snap into these down here. So you want to lift it up, get it in place, you'll have to line those things up at the same time and snap those at the same time. So give you an idea of what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it looks real easy to line these up, but We gotta get these lined up as well. Uh, if you get a chance, you can slip down below there and get your uh, lower radiator hose put on while it's still a little loose sometimes it's a little easier then once you get it in place and just install our radiator mounting bolts now we need to uh, crawl back underneath install these two nuts and bolts on the bottom side of the radiator to hold our other cooler up and we'll get to it from down below. So it looks a little different down here. The same as before, you want to line your bracket up with your holes on both sides, and then we'll drive our bolts in. Okay. 
and make sure that the bolt goes all the way through and comes through on the back side. That way we can get our nut on there. Then we'll do the same thing on this side and tighten them up. Now we've got our power steering cooler bolted back up. Our hoses hooked up. Next we can go ahead and take you know make sure that this bottom section slides into the grooves on either side of the radiator when you set it in there so that it bolts up properly. Now that we've got the fan shroud in place, got it secured well, we'll go ahead and install our fan shroud mounting bolts. There's two of them, 10 millimeters. And then you can put your serpentine belt on or your upper hose, whichever order you feel like. Some good practice before you put your new belt on is to just take both belts, hold them together, stretch them and make sure that they're the same before you fight it for 20 minutes trying to get it on there in the right spot. Now, because they come in a package all folded up, it makes it a little more difficult to get it to stay on the pulleys and stuff. So I'll just say put it on there the same way that you took it off. Remember I told you to make a drawing if you didn't have them before. Put it back on the same way you took it off. Uh, one issue I did find when you go to bolt your shroud on there's these little metal clips the bolt goes through and the metal clip is on there the uh, the bolts are too big for the clips so easy enough fix take the old clips off of your old radiator then you're good to go when you get that done Everything snugged up, hoses on. Then we'll need to put our overflow tank back in place. Making sure everything's lined up properly. And we'll watch your, your wires and hoses. As you put this back down in there, you don't get hung up on anything. You want to make sure that you get the things on the bottom of this lined up in those little slots when you slide it in. And doing this in the dark isn't the most ideal, but that's the situation we've got. place 10 millimeter bolt back on and don't forget our hose and we'll have to put our air inlet back in you know just like it come out before and right there let's fish it down in there and make it fit. Get it back into place and then you want to push it in until it snaps and you're good. Now we're finally at the point where we can put some coolant in there. Uh, I've got this coolant. This is concentrate not 50-50. You can use a 50-50 blend if that's what you have. Uh, concentrate's a little bit less expensive. So I'll pour this in straight and then I can top it back off with a whole nother full gallon of water and put that in. Or what I like to do is put in about half of it and then fill the rest of the way with water 
put that in and then fill it halfway back up. I, I don't know if it makes that big a difference because once you start it up and run it, it's all going to get circulated and mixed together anyway. But. Once you get your coolant level topped off, then you're going to install your new cap on your radiator. And we're going to run the engine for a while. And we're going to top it back off. Then we're going to run it for a while again. We're going to top it back off. And then we're going to double check everything for leaks. And we might have to wait till uh, the rain stops so that we can make sure that everything's nice and dry underneath. All right, so you've got the coolant topped off. You let it run. You let the engine run until you feel pressure. And then you no longer feel pressure on this hose. That's when you can open this cap. You can top the fluid back off. And you'll notice whenever you get close to the top, you'll start seeing the, the fluid floating back and forth a little bit. That means you're full. Go ahead and put your cap back on. Continue to let it run. And you also want to make sure that your overflow is full in between these two marks. You can see where our level is. As long as it's there, it's good. Run the engine, let it cool off. And then, of course, you can let it set, cool down completely overnight, start it back up the next day. Double check everything, check your levels, recheck everything, make sure it's working good. As long as you got good heat, everything's in good shape, all your lights are out, you're good to go. Thanks for watching.